Welcome back guys once again to the reviews. It's been a while since we've done a video. Uh, life's a bit busy at the moment and obviously I've got a full-time job to do. But today I'm going to be doing my first ever motherboard view, review and it's going to be for the B550E. It's going to be more of an overview so I'll tell you about the features about it. Um, but I'm also going to do a few benchmarks at the end to give you a, some sort of idea of how it performs. So stick with me guys and I hope you enjoy it. In the box itself we have obviously the motherboard itself which we'll have a look at later. Underneath this cardboard piece we have the manual with a driver CD although most people won't be able to use that anymore. We also have uh, a few other leaflets and other little quick start guides um, that you might want to have a look through when you get this motherboard. We also have a sheet of stickers provided by Asus which is nice if you want to stick those on your case. Then if we lift this other cardboard piece up, we can see there's a few more accessories underneath. We have an ARGB extension cable. We have an ARGB adapter cable as well. We have three SATA or SATA cables. There's some little sticky pads, which I'm not sure what they're for, maybe for the Wi-Fi antenna. We also have a USB-C to audio jack adapter. We have a little pack of standoffs and M.2 screws. And we also have some zip ties to help you with cable management. And then we have this little ROG Republic of Gamers lanyard keyring type thing. Then in this other little accessory box we have the Wi-Fi 6 antennas which can be connected if you need to use them for Wi-Fi. So along the back of the integrated IO shield we have the BIOS flashback button. We have 4 times 2.0 USB ports. We have 3 times USB 3.2 Gen 2 points, one of which is a Type C. We have a 1 times Intel 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. We have 1 times HDMI 2.1. We have 1 times DisplayPoint 1.2, and we have two antenna slots for Intel Wi-Fi 6. We also have another USB 2.0 for Audio Type C, and we have your standard five audio jacks. Across the side of the motherboard we have the standard 24 pin power for the motherboard. We have a USB header, a USB C 3.2 header, 6 SATA ports and we also have a 5 volt ARGB header. Across the bottom of the board we have the standard front panel I.O. connections, we have a speaker connection, we have a clear CMOS jumper, we have two USB headers, they're USB 2, we have a thermal sensor header a chassis fan header, another 5 volt ARGB header, another 12 volt ARGB header, sorry RGB header, another chassis fan and we also have a Q code readout to provide you with faults should you have any problems. Now on the board itself we have two M.2 slots, the top one of which is Gen 4, the bottom is Gen 3. We have three by 16 PCIe slots top one again being Gen 4 and we also have 2x1 PCIe slots. Now back up top of the board we have the CPU socket with the included AMD bracket. You can again see the thermal solution for the VRMs here. We also have another PWM 4 pin fan header and we also have 4 DIMM slots for your RAM. Right, so there we have the overview of the board. Uh, you can see it's pretty much standard for most boards and what you get. Uh, excuse the sound, there's someone doing work next door, I believe. Um, so if you hear some banging, that's what that is. So I just want to talk about a few things on this board and obviously some benchmarks that I ran. Um, now, the only thing I don't really like about this board is the RGB software. Um, I just want to set it to one stand, standard colour and it seems to be really difficult to do. Maybe I'm just being stupid, but I wasn't a massive fan of it. It just seems really counterintuitive. Um, but that's the only thing other than that, really. Uh, the board, 14 plus 2 power phases, so it's more than enough for most CPUs, especially the 5900X that I'm using, which is one of the reasons I went for it. The uh, reason I didn't go for an X570 is basically price. Um, and the fact that I don't really need Gen 4 drives, um, I'm not going to use them, um, I'll probably use one at some point, but at the moment I can't really afford it. Uh, I'm trying to keep all my money for a GPU and I can eventually buy one. Um, so anyway, let's get into some benchmarks. So I ran Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes um, to basically heat soak it, uh, give it um, a good chance of giving me some decent figures to show you. Uh, I'll just tell you the score that I got was 20,976, which is massive compared to what I'm used to on my 7700K when I was getting in the 6000s. Um, so I'm absolutely made up with that. Um, I might do a review on the 5900X at some point, 
but this is just about the motherboard for now. Um, so like I say, I ran it for 10 minutes uh, and then I recorded uh, CPU temperatures, uh, VRM temperatures, this is from Hardware Info, and I also recorded uh, average and maximum core clocks that were sustained for about the run. Uh, and basically I'll just tell you about those now. So the first one, CPU temperature, obviously this is more to do with the cooler that I've got on, which is the Dark Rock 4. Uh, I'll put a link up, in the, up there for you to have a look. Um, but that came out at an uh, average of 56 degrees and a maximum of 59, so absolutely fantastic. This is a brilliant cooler, but again, we're not talking about that today. I just wanted to include that. Um, the next one, uh, CPU ratios, I recorded um, this graph software that I'm using for hardware info only allows me to put three on one graph at a time and um, but it gives you a kind of spread uh, as to how the course performed and um, now one of my best cores which is called zero on here and um, basically maximum for 49.3 gigahertz and sustained 41.7 throughout the test uh, and I found that with most of the cores you'll hovered around 42 uh, gigahertz, sorry, 42, 4.2 gigahertz um, throughout throughout the test. Um, so, uh, yeah, a decent result, and most of them averaged towards the 4.8, 4.9. And the other cores I put on here, which are Core One and Core Ten, um, averaged 4.5 uh, 4 and 4.6. Sorry, not average, maximum, uh, 4.5 and 4.6 throughout the test, and averaged 4.1 to 4.2 throughout the test as well, as you can see on the on the screen. Um, so absolutely fantastic, definitely happy with that. Out of the box, this is just out of the box settings. Um, so a bit of tweaking, um, you'll be able to get better results, I would have thought, and I would, will be doing something with that, and I may even do a video about it as well at some point. Um, but I'm new to Ryzen, so um, I'm not gonna delve into that just yet. And the last one, VRM temperatures, which is one of the main things to monitor for a motherboard review. Um, we averaged 52.3 degrees, which is absolutely fantastic. Sorry about the dog making a noise. Uh, and we got a maximum of 56, which I'm more than happy with. Uh, no thermal throttling throughout the whole test. Um, nothing to, to speak of in terms of some things going bad at all. Um, absolutely fantastic motherboard and absolutely perfect for my setup here. Um, to talk about what else I'm running, I'm running 32 gigs of Crucial 3200. Again, I'm not overclocked that yet. Um, that's just on the XMP profile. And I'm still running my 1080 Ti from uh, Gigabyte, which hopefully I'll be getting a 38 at some point, And obviously I'm gonna do a video on that. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna, gonna ho hopefully get more videos out soon um, because obviously it's been a bit tight and I've not been doing many just recently um, but hopefully I'm going to get a few more out. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, I hope it gives you some uh, information that you need about this motherboard if you're looking at a motherboard to get. Um, price is absolutely fantastic, I got this for £190 um, so probably around $200 in the US um, so absolutely fantastic, uh, I can't, can't fault it at all. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already hit that thumbs up or hit the thumbs down if you didn't like this video and please leave me any comments in the section below if you have any questions about the motherboard or if you just want to talk to me or if you want to tell me some information that I've missed out that you think I should have included then please let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.